Wednesday, we have a 12 o'clock broker meeting. That's our tradition. So we will have a different subject in broker meeting, and uh, I'll be leading that uh, presentation. Today, I'll do quickly uh, broker on kind of subject introduction. And after, I'd like to introduce to Charles Rainer, immigration broker, and uh, give a life, uh, life insurance. So uh, let me quickly start with what I wanted to tell you in the broker side. Well, first of all, the market is way up. I mean, if you compare by percentage, the people are looking to the properties, they are making offers, they are very active. According to uh, Miami Association of Realtors Research, the Russia is number one, and after Colombia, Venezuela, Canada, as usual. So, market wake up. The confidence of the buyers are skyrocketing. They want to buy something. Sometimes I understand that the seller has an unexpected expectation that they can sell for price that is not worth. So your job is to convince the seller to sell on the right price and to convince a buyer to make the offer on the right price. How can you do that? A CMA. What's a CMA compared to market analysis, right? And we have a three tools to do CMA. First tool is from Matrix, right? Second tool is from AR. Amazing, thank you. And third tool is from <laughs> IMAP also can do it, right? Simple one. Like you remember quickly, press press two two buttons and you have it. You have a simple, you have a complicated, you have it more complicated. So all three three tools is here, right? Remember, we have RE Hangout. What's that? That's a platform that the company paying for you to have this tool to go there and to train yourself, to polish your skills. So, I want to please go to this RE Hangout platform. Hope all of you have an uh, account, right? The username is password. Do all of you have this account or not? Yes? You have not? You have? Yeah? Yeah? You have? You have? Everybody got right? Cool. I don't. That's great. You don't see Alitina, office manager, and Alitina will help you to have this uh, account and password. That's very important because, again, what's that? Remember, guys? That's your training. That's all resources that you need in order to be a successful real estate agent. You don't need anymore to go to the Miami Association of Realtors training and sit down and lose a day and remember 50% and don't remember another 50%. Here it is. Sit down when you want, what time you want, step by step. This guy is chewing for you like it's food and put it in your mouth like a, a mother. So, second one that I want to ask you. Remember I showed you our listings now almost 300. That's amazing. In September we had 120, now we have 300 listings. That's amazing. And that's your listing, guys. And I am, as a broker, giving you permission to market it. Here's another tool, lead generation. I was uh, going through this tool yesterday, and I don't know a lot of this stuff. It's amazing stuff. Simple step, using our listings will generate you per day around 50 leads. From 50 leads, I mean, at least 5% will be okay. So you need to do that. Please, today, go and set up your lead generation system. I'll come to each of you and check if you are doing that. Because that's your leads, that's your clients. It's amazing to have education, great office, amazing lawyers, but you need the clients. So here it is, the clients. You have a listing 300 to advertise, and you have a tool how to set up this system in order to get this lead. So, guys, wake up. Market is here, tools is here, you have the best setup in real estate business to be successful. Okay, so <clears throat> that's about real estate. Now I would like to present you the Charles. Uh, you know that we're the one-stop shop, right? We're the real estate, we're the business brokerage, we're the mortgage, we're the title, and also we are the R2 development, we have insurance, and now we have in-house the number one immigration lawyer. And when I'm saying number one, I'm not joking. Why? Because Charles has 100% successful rate for green card. 100%. And he's in the business. How long have you been in the business? Eight years. An attorney? Yeah. 15 years. 15 years. 
And what I like about Charles, he's a humble. He's number one immigration lawyer, and he's such an easy guy to approach. Text message, call, email, meet with him. Because I met so many immigration lawyers, they're liars, they're unprofessional, they're charging you 20 times more than real the rate is. So when I met this guy, I was just, no, I was like, oh my God, thank you God, you know? And again, remember, when you have positivity in your heart, in your brain, positive people come to us. Like uh, John Yuan, our, our uh, real estate lawyer. Look to this guy. He's also number one, he's amazing, he's humble, he's in your service here. Look to that criminal lawyer in Cal's council that we have. Amazing guy, like number one criminal lawyer in South Florida. He was doing the cases that in the major He was saving people's lives and he's with us today. And now we have immigration top lawyer. Charles graduated at Georgetown University and he speaks fluent Russian. Can you imagine? What? Fluent Russian. He went to the NGO, Moscow, he was studying the Russian. In Soviet Union time, he was helping people to move to America, immigrate. He's, I mean, he's an amazing guy, he's my friend, and I'd like to introduce him. He will be sitting here at the second office, and please, help your clients to get best immigration service that we have here. Charles, you're the, right. you're the man. Sure, man. <laughs> Charles Ray. Your check's in the mail, Ramon, for that plug. <laughs> better myself. So we'll try to uh, give you a presentation here about what we do, how it might be of interest to your clients, uh, and uh, answer any questions that you guys might have. I think connection. Yeah. No. Here we are. Yes. Um, so here's the problem. My best presentation is in Russian, but we're not a Russian speaker. No, that's no. it. International company. Uh, I can speak in English and the presentation uh, is in Russian. Uh, that was the thing, so. <laughs> we'll do the Spanish later, yeah. And then Portuguese too. So, um, so don't worry, I'll, I'll explain everything so it doesn't read Russian and uh, we'll, we'll be good. Um, here, let's go. So, uh, as Ramon said, we focus, we do immigration, we primarily focus on business immigration, so we work with investors, business owners, people that want to start a business in the U.S. to try to get status here to get a visa, people want to make an investment, uh, people who want to, um, based on their extraordinary abilities as well, they could be, you know, great musicians, trainers, um, coaches, actors, we work with all those types of people. Um, I would say probably 80% of our clients are Russian speaking, but of course we work with anybody you know, from all over the world. We have a lot of Turkish investors lately, South America as well. So, uh, we love everybody. Uh, this, this little bit Russian focus just talks about the interest in immigrating from Russia that uh, recent surveys that were done indicated 40% of top managers in Russia, for example, said that they had planned possibly uh, to leave Russia. So point being, uh, certainly from this market, there's a lot of interest uh, from, from Russia to do the economic situation and uh, instability there that people are thinking about other options here in the U.S. Um, here we just talked a little bit about the advantages of getting a green card, which I think everybody knows here. I mean, we, we don't need to talk about that. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with, with that, what that provides. Here is just a comparative chart showing how much people can save just on uh, public universities for the children if they have residency as opposed to um, uh, paying as an international student. So, for example, you just in Florida, that's not quite right, I don't know it's my name, but UF up in Gainesville, uh, you know, what you pay as a resident, and this is what you pay over four years um, as a non-resident. So sometimes, you know, and I think most of our clients are aware of this, that, you know, just on college tuition and loan, they could save, for example, $90,000 if they had a green card and they would consider residents here in the U.S. Um, this is a good table. I have this table in English as well, so don't worry about it. And actually, I don't know if you guys have like an intranet that, uh, like email to everybody because like I have a table that's in Russian and English that kind of gives it's like a, it's a cheat sheet or something each visa what are the main requirements how you can go from the non-immigrant version to the immigrant version it's a really good just summary that kind of you kind of look at it and share with your clients I mean this is like one of the most popular things that our clients see when they come to our office they take photographs of it you know it's like a rock star on the Facebook page um, but no it's really helpful we've got I, I've got a different chart in English and in Russian so there's some way we can circulate among your agents I'm sure that would help because if you're ever talking to any clients you know, if you're driving around or something, they ask about EB-5, what's this, what's that? Um, you know, just send them this cable, and um, 
Yeah, no, actually, this is not even a good version of it. We have a much better version. So we'll figure out a way to get you guys all a copy of that um, in the future. Um, we can talk about EB5 a little bit. Um, so EB5, you probably have heard a lot about this. EB5, that's when they invest 500000 in, in a project. Um, it can be their own business. But in most cases, they're investing in a project of what's called the regional center. So a regional center, there's about 900 regional centers throughout the US. A regional center is a company, it's just a company like anybody else, uh, that has permission from the immigration service to sponsor these projects. So it's almost like having a franchise license. They have like a franchise license from the government that any projects that they sponsor, uh, the investors of those projects could get a green card through the EB-5 program. Um, what's required of the investor? The investor has to invest a minimum amount of money, which is 500000 They've got to create 10 new jobs, and they have to show that their money's clean, you know, that they lawfully earned their money. And that can sometimes be a problem, but in, in all our years of doing this, we've only had one client where we really couldn't show their money was clean. So we're usually able to solve that issue. Um, this is a timeline, again, I apologize for the non-Russian speakers, of the timeline of how this goes, I'll briefly summarize it. So, you know, you file, you get your money, you, you, you pay your money, 500000 you get your petition ready, uh, you select the project that you're going to invest in and stuff like that, and that takes maybe a month or two. Um, it takes, it's taken, unfortunately, about a year and a half to get the first green card approved, so that's a downside of this program. So we're looking at 15 to 18 months, possibly longer, to get your first, what's called a conditional green card. That green card works for two years. So client comes, they make their investment, file the station, but they don't have to come, we can do it remotely. It takes about a year and a half to get the approval, um, and then uh, the the school maybe got the so the uh, additional green card is valid for two years. After that, we then file this new petition to get their permanent green card, um, and so it takes the whole process takes about four or five years. And at the end of the four or five year period, after five years of having the green card, they can file for a citizenship if they want. They don't have to. Um, and sometime around five or six years after they made that first investment the initial investment of 500,000 is returned to them. So that's in a nutshell kind of how it works. Uh, I know a lot of, uh, I would say investors from other countries like Turkey, South America, they're a little bit more familiar with EB-5, they're a little bit more comfortable. The Chinese are very comfortable. I mean, Chinese account for 85% of the EB-5 visas every year, 85%. So every year they give about 10,000 of these visas, and so we're talking about probably 8,000 or 9,000 just to Chinese. The rest is, you know, everybody else from the rest of the world. Russians uh, are afraid of EB-5 because it's you're giving money to somebody you don't know and you're hoping in five, six years they're going to pay you back, right? So anybody that's done business in Russia is like, yeah, yeah, I've heard that sort of thing. So, uh, but I have to tell you, I mean, from all our time, this is one of the safest ways to get a green card. There are downsides to it, right? It takes a year and a half to get that first green card, so that's not for everybody. Um, you have to pay the full 500000 up front. And you're not going to make a whole lot of money. Uh, I think we talked about it. Uh, let me see here. Uh, uh, we don't talk about it here, but uh, you're not going to make much money. You're going to make maybe one percent per year per annum. So you maybe of that five hundred thousand you invest, you're going to get about maybe five thousand in interest for those five years. So it's not. I mean, that's really not much money. But like I said, it's compared to the other options, and we'll talk about some of these other options. It's, it's a very reliable way to get your green card. So what really is important for the investor is, what's more important for them? Making money on a business or getting their green card and not having to worry about, am I gonna get it, am I not gonna do the green problem, stuff like that. And so th those are two different categories of people. And so, you know, so there are some people we work with that, they're more interested in the business. They had a big business, say overseas in Brazil, Russia. They wanna do that same business here and they wanna make money and they know how to do that. So the EB-5 might not be the best option for uh, but there are people like, um, you know, they, they have a business back in Russia and they don't want to develop a new business here. They're busy enough over there. Um, they travel back and forth and their kids are going to school here. Their wife is doing something here and all that. So um, for those kind of people, you know, the EU-5 is often a better alternative because it's really a passive investment. You invest the money, you kind of forget about it for five, six years, you get your green card, and then you get your, your investment back at the end of the, uh, the five, six years. Um, let's see, kind of this is kind of general stuff we just kind of talked about. I think the other, the other um, important thing is what we talked about is you've got to show that you've got a legal source of funds. So we have to show your money's clean. How we do that, it depends on how you got the money. And so it's really a case-by-case -case basis. If they got the 500000 by selling uh, an expensive apartment, okay, then there's a certain set of documents. We have to show you own the apartment or the house. 
uh, what did you sell it for in the sales price. We'll probably have to show you show how you purchased it, what you paid for it, you know, maybe five years ago, ten years ago, stuff like that. If your five hundred thousand is coming from your salary, for example, you just saved up money over ten years. Um, then we have to show you know maybe pay stubs, a letter from your employer. We have to show tax returns, stuff like that. So in, in every case, it just depends on uh, the investor's particular uh, situation. And here again, uh, different sources. It could be could be dividends, could be your salary, it could be the sale of uh, real estate overseas. You can even get a loan for the five hundred thousand, and that can serve as the basis for your investment. So you might have a, a home that's worth two million overseas. You get a line of credit off that home. You could take out five hundred thousand in equity. You could invest that in the five. That works too. So you can even get a gift. Your parents could give you the money. Uh, your friends. The, the, the service is getting a little nervous about like friends or friends of friends giving you the money because then they think that's kind of getting shaved. But certainly, you know, if your parents were to give you the money, maybe your parents just sold an apartment or something. They have some cash. They can give it to you. Uh, we do that uh, as well. Uh, inheritance as well. That that often uh, works <coughs> as well. Uh, again, these are some of the documents that we need. I don't think that's really relevant for you guys right now. Um, so if you guys have questions or your clients that are asking about it, we can you know, chat with you and give you some more details. But usually we've got to show tax declarations, we have to show uh, bank account statements, show the money moving. The biggest challenge I would say is when people are making the money in cash. Uh, obviously, there's not a paper trail, and you know, you work in some of these economies like Russia, um, China too, to some extent. You know, they're making all the money in cash, you know, keep it in them under the pillow or under the mattress, and there's no paper trail. So that's where things get a little bit difficult, and that's where we have to work with the client, get into the details of you know, where they got the money, where they keep it, and how they make it all. So in, in a nutshell, that's that's EB5. Um, there's, you know, lots of projects they can invest in in the regional centers here in South Florida, but they can invest anywhere. They, you know, if they plan to live in Florida, they can invest in a project in California, it doesn't matter. Um, and so, you know, working with Vermont on a number of possible projects and stuff like that, and, and so it doesn't matter. You know, the client comes up and says, I feel more comfortable with a hotel project or, you know, maybe a, a condo hotel or it could be office space. And we work with the client. I mean, I think the most important thing is you need to find a regional center that has a good track record, has good experience, and those are the people we work with. And then they say, look, we've done 20 projects. Everybody's gotten their money back. Nobody's had any problems. I mean, that's, that's the place one for your clients, so everybody uh, feels secure. Um, oh, and I should add, uh, no, okay, this isn't illegal, but it's, we're kind of in the gray area. But you guys, as realtors, uh, if you bring investors to these um, regional centers, like if you come to us and say, hey, I've got an investor who wants to refi, and we find a project for them, theoretically, you can, you're qualified to get a finder's fee from the regional center. I say theoretically. You're definitely eligible. The problem is if you're a U.S. resident, which I presume here is technically you can't receive that money directly, but if you have uh, relatives overseas or friends or anybody who has an overseas account, for example, that could receive the money on your half, on your behalf, then they could pay that money to the person. So I mean that, that's completely legitimate, and they they pay these referral fees. Um, it's just they can't pay them to a U.S. person unless that person has a securities brokerage license, which is called a Series Seven. So if anybody has a Series Seven, you're good. But if you don't, um, again, they can still pay you uh, this referral fee. And it's, it's a pretty good referral fee, but it just has to go to the account of somebody who's overseas. So it really doesn't matter, you know, quite honestly. You can just say, you know, give them the account of your friend, your relative, whatever. If they're overseas, they can pay that. So if anybody has questions about that, I can talk to you later about what it is. The amount they pay varies based on the project and stuff like that, but um, it's, it's, it's close. It's comparable to what you get in the real estate commission for a seller. Uh, E2, uh, E2 is another, so the E5, you get a green card. The E2 is kind of a similar option, but you get only just a temporary status here. You do not get a green card. Um, you have to make an investment very small, you start from about $70,000. Um, there's really no, there's no requirement that you have any experience overseas as a manager, as a director, as an investor. It's pretty much anybody who's overseas that has a desire of starting a business or buying a business. I'm sure some of you guys have probably bought and sold uh, for business brokerage, right? Um, uh, for your clients and probably the E2s are very popular here, especially among South Americans. That E2 is not available to Russians or Belarusians or Uzbeks. But I think uh, everyone else from the former Soviet Union qualifies for the E2. 
there's a there's a list of I think we have oh shoot I don't have a list here. You can go online or if you guys have any questions you can contact me. There's a list of countries. So the E2 is available only to countries that have a treaty with the U.S. Um, you yeah, Venezuela doesn't, but uh, no. no. Yeah, but, but most other stuff. Argentina does. Um, <laughs> Chile does. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. But actually, but a lot of people get to dual passports. A lot of Venezuelans are eligible to get Italian right or Spanish. Yeah, Spanish. Yeah, and then that they That's put that. Yeah. Portugal. 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 Yeah. Really, Spain does. Spain does. Yeah. So um, Ukraine qualifies, for example, if you have a Ukrainian clients. The problem is though, um, with the E2, each country is different in terms of how long the visa is valid for. So like Canadians, they get it for five years. Yeah, that's great. They can come and go for five years, no problems. Uh, with South Americans, I think it varies, but it's maybe two to three years. It varies in the country. Ukraine, it's 90 days. So, so it's, 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 it's so, you know, I'm trying, so yeah, think about it. Right? Ukrainians get a 10 year tourist visa, but if you want to do the E2, it's a 90 day visa. So what does that mean? So just so you guys are clear, a visa is different than your steps. The visa just means you have to enter the U.S. within 90 days. Once you get here, you can stay here, like for Ukrainians, for two years with the E2. So that again, sometimes people think the visa means that's all the time you can stay in the U.S. No, that's just when you have to come to the U.S. Once you get here, it doesn't matter. The visa could expire. It doesn't matter. They'll give you this. It's what the stamp is in the passport that controls how long you can stay here for. So Ukrainians, I mean, people always talk about E2s for Ukrainians. It's great. It's great. It is. But again, the visa only lasts for 90 days. So. And then once you're here and you leave the country again, you got to go to the embassy in Kiev to get a new visa. So it's not always as good as, as what it sounds. Um, L1, L1 is very common. I think I'm sure a lot of you have heard about them. Um, and so it's very common among people that want to maybe spend less money to try to get status here. Um, again, I would say roughly we'd have to show that you're going to invest about $100,000. Um, it's very quick to get the visa, meaning uh, you could probably get the visa in, um, if you pay a little bit extra for premium processing, you know, four to six weeks. So it's very fast. You can come here as a tourist, and while you're here, we can, we can do the L1 for you. So that's a really good plus for people. Um, uh, what are the downsides? Um, downsides, I would say from my experience working, well, I should say, I'll, I'll go through the, uh, the requirements first here. What do you need to do to get the L1? First, you have to prepare a business plan. Okay, that takes a while, probably two, three weeks or longer. You have to open an office in the U.S., so that means you have to get a lease and have office space. You can't use a home office, that doesn't work for an L1. So you've got to get a lease. And so again, there's a bit of a risk here for the investor because they're, they're signing the lease, uh, you know, they're entering into financial obligations, they've got to make some investments, maybe buy some equipment, show that they're really planning to go forward, maybe hire some people, although you're not obligated to hire somebody before you file it. Uh, and if you get a denial, you know, you got a lease for an office that you don't need. So there is a degree of risk here. I mean, well, we try to work with our clients, um, and you should probably do that too. Like, for example, if they're cutting a deal for a lease, we always try to negotiate with the landlord so that there's a break period or it might be contingent on getting the visa, which some landlords are open to doing that. Or we might get a you know, break term after six months because the lease has to be for a whole year based on the immigration requirements. The lease has to be for 12 months because that first visa is issued for 12 months. But we try to negotiate something with the landlord at least that might allow them to, you know, after three months or six months, break the lease and stuff like that. And landlords are usually somewhat flexible in that response or in that regard in order to help save uh, money for the client in case they're not, um, they're not approved. Uh, the other thing we've got to show is at the time of the filing that you've got adequate money. I should say that you, the applicant, has enough money in his or her business account for startup operations. And so usually that's about 50000 So we usually say you've got to have about 50000 um, in your account um, at the time of filing. So it depends on the business plan. You know, if you're, you're having a larger business, you might need a little bit more money. If it's smaller, it could be a little bit less. So if you compare it to the EB-5, right, 50 as opposed to 500, big difference, right? So a lot of people think, hey, I'm going to try this, the L1. And I'm not saying the L1 is a bad option, but um, it's tough. It's tough in that, uh, here, I, I kind of skipped ahead, to, we'll go back here. Uh, it's tough, the L1 is tough in the sense that, okay, the visa is good for one year, right, with the L1. You've opened your business, you ran it for a year. We've got to show that you've hired some people there after doing that first year. How many people do you need? Depends, but I would say at a minimum, you need three employees. Three employees at least, preferably four or more. So you think about, right, think about your clients, and they got to start up a business, three or four people at the end of the first year. I mean, for a lot of startups, that's, that's quite a lot of people. And so the problem we see a lot of times with clients is, they're in a situation they've got to invest more and more money into the business 
to keep their status, to ensure that they get the renewal, but they don't, you know, they have to hire four people, and they don't need four people, and they gotta buy more equipment or more inventory to make it look like they're, they're doing something, and they don't need it. And so it creates sometimes extra expenses, and it becomes more expensive, and I've even seen it where people ended up spending more than 500,000 than the EB-5, and they don't have a green card, and they're not even sure they're gonna get their L1 renewed. So it's, it's a bit of a risk. So a lot of people look at that L1 and think, oh, 50,000, I got 50,000, I can start my business. And sure, you can get that going, but at the end of that first year, when we have to get the extension, it could be tough. And so it, it's difficult for clients, and that's why you know, we always try to advise clients you know, to a clear understanding of what they're getting into, because sometimes they get into that one year, they gotta renew, and they don't have employees, or they don't have a turnover, and it can be a problem. The EB1C, so this is the green card version of the L1. So the L1 gives you a visa for the first year for a year, and then you can renew it for two years, three times. So you get a total of seven years in that L1 status. During that time, if you, get the, if you grow the company large enough, you can uh, transfer over to a green card, and that's, that's called the EB1C. Now there's, there's two ways to, to do the, uh, the EB1C here, is you can, Start with the L1, you open your own company, you grow it, you get up to here, and you file the green card. Or you can immediately just buy a company already that meets these requirements instead of growing it from scratch. And that's probably the easiest way to do it, but you gotta find the right company, right? You gotta find a company that's profitable, that has enough employees, that you know appeals to you and you think you can manage. And I think, you know, I think Ramon mentioned you guys can start trying to do more with business brokerage. I mean, that's ideal. We have lots of clients. So if you guys can go out there and find businesses that meet these requirements. And I agree, so this is in, in Russian, so for part of you, it's not too helpful to get something in English to explain some of what the requirements are. But actually, if you, you know, when you're out there, we, we have a line of people looking for good businesses. It's a matter of just finding them. And I, I guess that's easier said than done, right? I mean, if it's a good business, making money and stuff like that, why is the seller going to sell it, right? So that, that is an issue, um, but it happens, right? People want, they're going to retire. I mean, I'd say the most often is the owner's been doing this for 20, 30 years. He's ready to retire and stuff like that. Maybe the partnership is a partnership that's falling apart and partners want to go their own ways. So they're, they're out there, it just requires time you know, and effort. But um, you know, I'll just put this out there. If you guys, I mean, I, again, some way we can send out an email, I'll send around the charts in English and Russian, and then I can maybe send some of the general requirements. And if you guys are out there and you find a business that meets these requirements, I mean, bring it to our attention. I mean, we usually have people that are ready and looking, it's just a matter of finding uh, that business. Um, what are the requirements usually? We've, we've got to show that, so again, this is you've got a business, you want to get the green card, we've got to show, first of all, there has to be an overseas company um, that you've worked at previously. So with the L1 and the EB1C, there has to be an affiliated overseas company where you, the applicant, previously worked and had experience as a manager. So sometimes that can be a problem, because if you didn't work at a company previously, maybe you were just an entrepreneur, you're working on your own, and you come to the US, this isn't gonna work for you. We have to show, so usually how it usually works is the applicant had his or her own company overseas and then they came to the U.S. and then opened up for a bought company here. And that usually works and, and that would work in this case too. So we've got to show you've got a company overseas that the U.S. company has a net profit of about 70000 and the company here in the U.S. has about eight, eight employees with two layers of management. So what does it mean is the applicant's up here, he or she is the general manager, there's a couple managers in the mid layer, and then some employees underneath. But then again, then these are details maybe you don't have to worry about, but just think you're keeping in mind about eight employees or more, net profit about 70,000, um, and that could probably be of possible interest for the um, Other, I can quickly go through some of the other visas that really probably aren't too relevant for you guys and the work you do, like work visas like an H1B, uh, you know, those are usually programmers. Um, scientists, stuff like that, specialists. I, I can't, you know, um, I'm not so sure with your work you're going to run across that, but you know, that's always something that might be of interest uh, to your clients. EV2, EV3, again, these are work-related green cards, so if the, um, you know, client of yours has a job offered from a company, uh, we could theoretically qualify them for a green card um, at that point. And then there's for people with outstanding abilities, o, o visa, this is for people that have um, uh, strong accomplishments or abilities in, in sports, arts, um, education, business. Um, so a lot of trainers here, like at some some of the gyms and stuff like that, uh, ice skate, ice skating trainers. You know, they have one visas. That's very common. And then um, EB1A is the green card version of that. So again, so people with this, but this to get the green card, you have to have a higher level of ability than the O. So this might not be Nobel Prize, you know, level, but these are people from overseas that have. Gotten, 
people that we've done this for, maybe well-known singers in their home country, uh, could be scientists that are very well recognized uh, globally and stuff like that. Again, I, I don't imagine you might have uh, many uh, clients with this, but um, just throw it up there. And I think, you know, for the most part, I've probably spoken more than I should have, but we will find a way to get to you guys, get information, get my contacts to you. So you always have questions because we work with a lot of realtors, and um, so I'm sure a lot of this is new to you, and then um, give you some of that information as well about the different pieces of categories in Russian and English, so that uh, you're going to be as smart as I am pretty soon. Mm -hmm. so, thanks again for the time. Uh, questions, 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 Charles. What, which days and what time you will be here in this office? Yeah, I guess we're still, so I mean, we're going to be sitting over here, I don't know if I, Julia there is my associate as well, just, uh, so between the two of us, we're going to be here, I mean, we'll work out the schedule, Vermont, I mean, at this point, I guess I don't know, and uh, we'll, we'll work out the schedule and maybe share it with everybody that we're here, that if you've got questions, you can come by and talk to us, or if you're here with clients, you know, just hop by in the office, and, um, you know, we can speak with you and the client if they've got some questions, go from there. Great, thank you, thank you very much, and I just want to little kind of to summarize, guys, Okay, remember, Miami Red Square Realty is certified a business brokerage. What does it mean? I, as your broker, went for special school, had a training. After I passed the school, after the school, I went and passed the federal exam, and I got the license. So it's a little bit easier in business brokerage than in the real estate. So now, under my license as a broker, you have an ability, a right, to become a business broker. What does it mean? It means it's separate MLS, separate listings of actual working businesses. In Florida, there is 1,400 business brokers. Compare, guys, 43,000 real estate agents just in Miami Association of Realtors and 1,400 business brokers in whole Florida. Competition is tremendously low and the product is very prestige to sell. For example, as you know, I'm not a competing broker. When I'm closing the deals or working on deals, I always have a partner, one of you guys. The same situation in business brokerage. Now my partner in business brokerage is Evgenia Karita. She's a real estate agent, she's a business brokerage agent, and she's a lawyer. So right now we have with Evgenia two listings, right? two business brokerage listings, and what we're doing, that's like a, how you can be successful think outside the box. So we have business brokerage and we got the listing, uh, one of the listings, it's a dental clinic and we presented this dental clinic. But what we did, we went to this dental clinic, Evgeny as a lawyer organized all, all their internal legislation, contracts, the license, accounting. So just we made this business perfect for selling. What we did after, we said, okay, how we can deliver the message to buyer in five minutes video, not just marketing videos that buy my product, but the proof by numbers, tax returns, the experts, the license that this business is good for sale. So we contacted and contracted the video production team, the uh, Pavel uh, Alexei, who is right now also very popular, they are doing amazing products, and they are doing right now for us the video explain it's not a video just like a pictures nice and the ocean and the dental no that will be like a the first i believe first like a kind of uh introduction like an offer with particular numbers particular benefits why you need to buy this business supported by the way in this video will be our immigration lawyer saying that yes this business for sale <coughs> and i'm as an immigration lawyer with 100 percent success rate will be doing immigration around this business it could be a one visa it could be a two visa depending who is buyer from which country and now we have this immigration company lawyer charles and julia in our office so connect the dots guys now when we have this video you can just put this video in your facebook or social media or send to other business owners and say to them, hey guys, we are selling the businesses. Don't you want to sell your business? Right now we're selling this business that makes 360,000 net per year. So in business brokerage, you multiply net annual income by three and you're getting your number that it's good to sell. So 1.1 1, 1. 1. 1 million. So that's the number. So you can take this video as your marketing material Take the videos of Charles that I send you in the chat. 
in different languages that we have such a value asset in the office and start to get the listings, businesses and sell businesses. And when you sell businesses, by the way, that's the 10% commission in business brokerage. Real estate six, business brokerage ten. Much higher commission, much kind of prestige work because you have a manager of selling business and you have the best immigration lawyer, you have the business brokerage here with one stop shop. So it's a great opportunity. Think about that and do that. It's very easy, okay? So one more time. Thank you very much, Charles. Thank you. And, uh, now before I'll introduce to the uh, our uh, insurance, I just want five minutes to ask uh, the mortgage. We have a mortgage. Just quickly, don't say what kind of problem we have. You buy a house and after we do the uh, life insurance. Our mortgage, please. Hello. Yuri. My name is Yuri and I talk to many of you separately. I closed the showroom, right? One day we closed together. Uh, so we are, like Roman only says, one star shop. We're doing conventional loans, FHA, foreign nationals, hard money loans, any loan possible. We know all the <coughs> new and exciting stuff like getting financing for a condo with just 10 percent down payment. And uh, any other possible scenario, please bring it here. We are always here and we'll answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very any much. Any questions? Any questions, you go, you know where they sit in, so we have in house 20 years experience, mortgage our partners, and that's an amazing tool for you guys to pre-qualify your clients, to get the mortgage for them. And it's great to also don't waste your time. Because sometimes buyers think that they can afford one million dollar apartment. They cannot. And before like uh, if you go and spend one week showing them this apartment, say politely, can you please pre-qualify you for the mortgage free of charge? Bring them here. It will not take long. Yeah, it will take how long does it take? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. minutes. Ten minutes so. free of charge to find out how much you worth. What can you afford? What's your buying ability? What's your buying ability? Remember, buying ability, very polite. So thank you very much and now